Tonight on CTV, we have student reactions from Charlie Kirk and Donald Trump Jr.'s visit to CSU. And supporters and protesters of the visit meet outside of the UCA. And find out what steps CSU is taking to stop email scams targeting students. All this and more on CTV News Channel 11. Good evening, Rams. I'm Lauren Orcutt. And I'm Bella Roberts. CSU's Turning Point USA chapter hosted the Culture War Tour featuring Charlie Kirk and guests on Tuesday evening. Here is what the conservative group had to say from inside the venue. Let's get an estimate on the process. Um, I think it's very empowering to be in a room with people that are so like-minded. Um, you know, he's wearing a MAGA hat, totally acceptable, celebrated. Um, and I wanted to come tonight because I've seen Trump at his rally. Um, and I wanted to see Trump Jr. and Charlie Kirk. Our chapter is honored this year to host the 2019 Culture War Tour featuring Charlie Kirk. Tonight with special guests Kimberly Guilfoyle and Donald Trump Jr. Charlie Kirk began the Culture War Tour by criticizing CSU and President Joyce McConnell for the small room given to the event and for an email sent earlier this year. However, when certain people that are in positions of leadership go out of their way to misrepresent Turning Point USA and misrepresent myself, I have to respond. And the president of this university dared send out an email to the entire student body that talked about despicable acts that happen on this campus that we repudiate and that we reject that have nothing to do with us. And with no pretext and no precondition, then in the next paragraph over says, I've also learned that Charlie Kirk is coming to campus. During the event, the panel talked like, about how liberal college campuses impact students with more conservative you, you views. Think, think Events like this are key to at least bringing new ideas to people. I, I don't hear the stuff that's being said in here in my classroom. One of the presenters was outside the UCA where he was interviewing both protesters and counter protesters, often commenting on things like what they were wearing. <laughs> So, so I'm going to ask a question. question. There are signs of words. You're wearing a Soviet, a Soviet flag, a Soviet star. Donald Trump Jr. and Charlie Kirk poked fun at the transgender community when discussing children who are raised gender neutral. Is that unreasonable to ask a straight man to not date someone maybe with a beard, maybe with some man parts? I... Isabella Roberts reporting with CTV 11. While there was a lot going on inside, there was also a lot going on outside. Uh, Lauren was there. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, tensions were definitely high outside, and you can tell that everyone who came had really strong opinions. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it was just as intense inside as well. It was, yeah. yeah. While the event was going on inside of the UCA, outside there was another event. Protesters supporting the Culture War Tour and counter-protesters who said that they didn't want this tour coming to CSU. It was a street divider. On one side, people who wanted to hear from a conservative on campus. It's really great that CSU put this on. And another group, using their voices to say, not this group, not this campus. As the event inside reached capacity, Culture War Tour supporters spilled outside using their voices too. I'm here because I, I love America and I love our country. For police, it was just a matter of keeping both groups apart and keeping the streets clear and accessible. Just to be wary of everyone's safety. And that's why we're out here on the front lines trying to keep folks safe. In the end, two opposing groups, each passionate about their beliefs and a street divided representing the larger picture, a country divided as well. Police reported few problems. For the most part, everyone kept to their side of the street. I'm sure they expect more of these type of confrontations as the political divide, divide continues to grow. President Joyce McConnell announced the administration is asking for proposals to the Race, Bias and Equity initiative that she announced last month at her fall address. Some of the proposals that are already in place are a series of online modules to address the issue of racism and bias in the classroom. In addition, there are diversity trainings for students and change to the president's executive leadership team. 
the administration is asking for students, staff, and faculty to submit their proposals. If you would like to submit a proposal, they will be accepted until November 4th at 5 in the afternoon. For more information on the CSU Race, Bias, and Equity Initiative, you can visit president.colostate.edu. You may have noticed a suspicious email or two this past semester, and that is because email scams have plagued students' email boxes more this past year. In order to help stop those scams, the Academic Computing and Network Services launched a threat protection service for Microsoft Word this Monday. However, according to the Collegian, this won't affect students who are using their Gmail. Since these email scams are getting more sophisticated, ACNS urges students ca to have caution when faculty and other students receive emails. Associated students of CSU met last night in order to discuss pay and filling a new position in the Amin Amin Amundsen administration. The big takeaways from the ASCSU meeting last night is that they are adding an executive director in the Senate. The pay for this position was being voted on last night. The Senate had major concerns on this pay raise and questioned why is it a higher paying job than the other branches. More hours are added. person is doing more work, is expected to do more work. Pay is increased. Senator Fields was saying that this specific position, the person that took this position, was aware of the specific hours that they were going to have to work. As far as the hours, it's not necessarily that hours were added is that that was in the original job description so therefore one job was working more hours with the same amount of pay as everyone else. But towards the end of the night the decision was made to pass the bill. I met up with Melissa Cassana to ask what exactly is this position and why is it so important to the CSU students. So our Director of Community Affairs and Deputy Director of Governmental Affairs um, work uh, closely. Um, they kind of serve as our connection between ASCSU, the student body, and the community, both um, on a local policy level and on a governmental um, statewide policy level. So both of those um, positions are important. Um, they work on things like passing um, legislation um, through uh, the state of Colorado that affect higher education, um, working on things like um, housing affordability and city for Collins, so things like E plus two, um, working on food and security policies. All of those things are things that they work on. So if you're ever curious about anything that we're working on policy related, um, if you have any question, they draft policy updates, um, they draft resumes um, for city councils and definitely um, work on all of those things um, with our city council and attend city council meetings on a weekly basis. Um, we work with the relationships between our um, our governance and Collins and CSU. Allison Tackett, CTV, Channel 11. If you are curious about what exactly ASCSU does, you can find more information at ascsu.colostate.edu. A Lyft driver was fired after a possible hit and run that took place in Fort Collins. According to the Coloradoan, the potential hit and run took place on I-25 and Harmony on October 16th at around 1030 in the morning. Fort Collins police do know about the crash and are asking if anyone has any information to call 970-221-6540. Two suspects were caught spray painting multiple cars in Campus West. According to CBS 4 News, the vandals broke into one car and spray painted others. The string of vandals took place in the area from Cypress Drive to Ponderosa in between Lake and Elizabeth Streets. A woman filed a lawsuit against a Fort Collins police officer and the city for alleged excessive use of force. According to the Coloradoan, the woman was arrested by an off-duty police officer. The lawsuit was filed on October 4th in district court. An internal review was actually done by the Fort Collins Police Department, and they did find that the officer did violate po policies during the arrest. The Colorado Department of Transportation is planning another full closure of I-25 next Wednesday night. Crews will be closing the interstate over Prospect Road in order to pour the concrete deck over the new bridge that is being built. Drivers on I-25 will be able to use the on and off ramps to get back on the interstate. Drivers using Prospect Road will also have to follow a detour. For more information, you can visit cotrip.com. President Trump made a comment that he would be building a border wall in Colorado. 
The comment came after he was speaking at an event in Pittsburgh where he said that the progress was starting on the wall border in Texas. He tweeted last night that he was just kidding about actually building a wall in Colorado, but rather he said that Colorado would get benefits from the wall. The comment drew a lot of attention, and Governor, Governor Jared Polis also weighed in by saying, quote, well, this is awkward. Colorado doesn't border Mexico. You know, Bella, I did hear about this on Twitter. Did you, and, and you, Krista, did you hear about it on Twitter or in the news earlier this morning? Yeah, I actually read the Denver Post earlier this morning and found that out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I personally have not heard about this until um, fairly recently, and so it's just interesting to see how this will develop, I think. Definitely. Right. But, Speaking of walls, have you two seen the walls that have murals, like murals painted on them just all over Fort Collins? I have, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely such an interesting thing. And I was going around Fort Collins this week and learning about all of the things that this group does. Um, in addition to painting these murals on the walls, they also go around and paint the pianos that you'll see around Old Town okay. as well as the electrical boxes. That's wow. super cool. The Art and Public Places Initiative, organized by the City of Fort Collins, is the mastermind behind the painted electrical cabinets and pianos in Fort Collins. The Art and Public Places program is a tiered program. So there's um, our 1% tier. We uh, receive 1% of all construction projects, over $250,000. These funds go towards creating art around town that serve many purposes. I think that art really adds a sense of identity to the community. It's, it's a, not only a landmark where people can say, meet me by this art, but it's also a good way to start conversations and a way to deter graffiti around town. The Transformer Cabinet Project is responsible for those painted boxes. Although the original intent of this project was to deter graffiti artists from tagging the cabinets, it has contributed to the community as well. As far as, you know, bringing joy and happiness to alleys and, and what would be like a boring gray electrical cabinet. Decorating those, making those a little more attractive and um, spreading color and joy through the city. Overall, these projects add great value to the lives of those who notice them. Art inspires art, of course, so it just adds to the magic. I mean, it is magic, this whole area right here. They need more pianos. Without these pianos, I'd be hopeless. This project is really great. There, there's so many times I walk through town and I see friends gathered around pianos, even people gathered around strangers listening to music. Everyone's always smiling. This is something that just brings so much joy to people, whether they realize it or not. So now that I am a little bit more aware of um, the kind of the background behind these projects, I can't help but see the, especially the electrical boxes just all over town. Yeah. Have you seen them? Yeah, I, I actually have one right outside of my house. And I've always wondered like oh. who paints them, if they're students okay. or what, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't, I haven't seen the electrical boxes yet, but um, I actually was downtown the other day and I saw someone painting a piano. And so that was pretty, pretty cool to witness that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. Totally. It's kind of neat to see how those things actually get there that you just kind of pass by, see them, don't think much about it. But now yeah. we know. Right, right, I'm glad you got to explore that. <laughs> oh yeah. It was, an amazing experience. <laughs> all right, Rams, well, don't go anywhere because I will be right back to talk to you about all of the spicy entertainment events we have coming up. So stick around.